So now it's time to implement the next feature, which is a search feature. Now why search is important is because we are using data JPA, right? Which is Spring data JPA. And if you look at the repo layer, it's quite empty. So we are not defining any method or we're not even declaring the methods. We, we got all the methods from the JPA repository. So when things are simple, like uh, CRUD operations, it can be done with the help of JPA repository. But let's say if you want to find something which is not a primary key, because whatever we are doing now, if you're searching for a, if you're searching for a product by the ID, it is very easy, right? You can just use a product by ID and it works. Uh, but what about if you want to search with some other things? Example, if you want to search with uh, the name or I mean, the product name or the description or the amount, the quantity, right? I mean, that's weird, right? Why someone will search for by quantity? By quantity, uh, doesn't matter. You got the point, right? So if you have other fields to, to check with, how do you make it work? Because by default, it will not support. Example, if I go back to my product service and let's say in any of the method here, uh, let's say in the update itself, just just to check what can do we do. So if I say report dot, there are multiple methods, right? Uh, one of the method is find by ID. So if you have the ID, you can do it. But we don't have a method using which you can actually find by name or any other field of the database. Now, what are the fields we have? If you go to product, uh, we got description, brand, yeah. So let's say if you want to search by a brand, in that case, what you can do is, let's say when you search with a brand, and uh, of course you can have multiple products with the same brand. In that case, you can define, you can declare, not define, you can declare your own method, which will return you the list of product and, okay, list of products. And then you can define, you can mention the method, you can mention find by, and you can mention the variable or the type, which is brand. And then you can, you can pass the brand here. Okay, so this is how basically you can achieve this. Now your GPA does support this, right? But then this is only for one field or maybe you can have two fields. You can also have your and and you can mention the next uh, variable. But let's say uh, you have multiple things to check with. Example, if you want to search, but then not just based on one field or maybe multiple field, or maybe you have to, you want to mention some customized uh, query. In that case, you can literally write the query, not the SQL query. You can, but then I don't want to add the SQL query. And that's why we we got something called a JPQL, which is JPQL, which stands for a JPA query language. So it is similar to SQL. The only difference is in SQL, we use tables. Here we have to use class name. In SQL, we use column names. Here we have to use the field names. Okay, so those are, those are the changes we have. Okay, uh, so the method which I want to do is, uh, which I want to write here is a method which will return the list of product and maybe I will have the method name as search products and then here you can pass the keyword on on which you want to search right so we can have this method but this will not work so by default JP will not understand what search products uh, means so and that's why you have to mention the query and the way you can do that is by writing at the rate query so you can write the query here okay now what is a query we'll see that in some time but we have to mention the query in this uh, in this brackets. Okay. And of course, in the query, we are going to use keyword. Uh, so example, if you want to search something in uh, in uh, SQL, so you say select star from the table, it's a product where the product or the brand is equal to, and then you, you can use a like keyword and uh, you can put that in single quote, right? So what's a keyword you want to search with? So that's something we are going to use here. But then if you want to achieve this, we have to also change our front end, right? So let's start with front end and then we'll come back here. So let me go back to my front end. Now this is a front end, right? Now in this front end, basically we don't have the search feature. So for that, I'm going to open the new front end. So, and you will find the link in description. So I will say open folder. And this is the thing, which is ecom front end four. So this is the fourth front end which we are using. Of course, everything is iteration, so nothing new. Uh, and if I open that, uh, Okay, I can simply say npm install and by the time it is happening, let's look at the place where it is searching. Again, with you, I'm doing this for the first time. So I'll go to navbar. I'm assuming that it is navbar and here it is. Uh, so you can see there's, there will be search box and then every time you hit the keyboard or when you, when you hit a key, it will call this function called handle change. Uh, let's see, where are we calling it? Yeah, so if you can see, uh, we have uh, handle change here. So with every input, every time you press the button, it will hit this query. Again, there are different way of implementing it. Maybe you can have a button. So once you type the entire text, you can hit the button, uh, which is much more efficient in terms of uh, server load because you're not going to search the server for every key, but maybe we want to make that uh, more user friendly just by typing few letters if you can get the suggestions. Uh, so it is hitting that. 
and he's requesting for this URL. So this is what we have to work with. So search and then the value. Okay, so we are using question mark here in the front end. We can also use slash, but let's so question mark makes sense here. So we are not going to use path variable because this for this we have to use something else. Again, we'll see that. So this is the URL we have to work with. So install done. Let me just say run dev and enter. So it's running on this port number now. Maybe earlier port number is busy. It says something went wrong uh, because the server is not ready. And this is what I was talking about. So if I search something, it should give some suggestions. There's no button here to say go, so you have to give the suggestion. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to my server or the backend. And in this, basically I will go back to my product service. We have, we have written this, let's remove the extra line. And go back to controller. So basically we need a mapping for that particular search. So I can create a public, it will return the response entity, which will return the list of products. And let's say the method name is search products. Now this will accept a string, right? So string keyword, which is coming from the client side. And for this, we are going to do mapping as well. So I will say request uh, or get mapping for the URL. So now we know the URL, it is slash product, slash. Okay, we don't know the URL. Uh, so slash product slash search is the URL. Okay, but then how we are going to accept uh, this particular thing here, which is name is value. Now in that case, of course it should be keyword so you're searching for name. Okay, looks like I'm using a wrong front end. Okay, so we, let me open the fifth one. I think fifth is a correct one. I was, expe I was expecting that it will be keyword, but I got name. Uh, let me just check the fifth one. And yeah, so just keyword. So this is the correct one, not the earlier one. Uh, so what I will do is I will just do the same thing for this, which is npm install and npm run dev. So when this is using the same port number, Okay, uh, this is what I was looking for. So we have changed the uh, front page if the backend is not ready. Uh, okay, so my bad. So I was using the wrong UI. So I will share this link in the description, the fifth one. Okay, anyway, so let's get back to the code. And here I'm going to use the same thing because we are searching for keyword. I mean, we are passing the keyword in the URL. So it will accept that in the same name. Okay, once you have that, the next thing you have to do is we have to basically call the service method, right, to search it. Now the service method is going to return you the list of products. And I will say products is equal to, and I will use a product service. So I will say service dot uh, search products. Unfortunately, we don't have that method there but uh, we'll, we'll create one, so I will say keyword. So I want this method in the service. But let's say if you got the products, how will, how will you return the value? So I will say return, and now we have to return the response entity, not the products, and in the response entity, we have to return the products. And then you have to also give the status, which is dot okay, and done. But then we don't have this method, so let's create one in this service, and in this service, we have creating this method, now again, service will not do anything. Service will simply say return, and it will ask the repo, hey repo, search the products. And since we have created the method in this uh, repo first, we have that there, just pass this keyword. So service job is nothing much here, just pass it to the repo. Now in the repo, we are going to do the actual work, okay? I'm just confirming if everything is good in here. So looks good, nothing wrong. Let's go back to repo and let's write our query. Okay, now basically we have to use the JPQL, right? Not the SQL query. So it looks similar to SQL, so I will say select. And we don't say star, we say P. Now what is P here? Uh, so I will say from product, and mind you product is not a table here, it's a class name. And then this is the allies for it. So this P is allies for product, and that's what we are using here. And then we say where, and now after this where, we have to check for multiple fields. We got for name, brand, so we'll do that here. So I will say enter. Uh, now the first thing we can do is we can check for the name field. So I can say p.name because in the p we got the name, right? So we'll say p.name and let's match it with the keyword. Now how do we match it? Basically we can use like for matching this uh, text and then we can use the uh, percentage symbol because it might be having something front and back of it. That's how we do it in SQL. And in between we can pass the keyword. Now since keyword is basically, this is what you have to, it has to pick up, right? So we can use the uh, colon. So when you say colon, it will search for this field in the uh, parameters which you are passing. So that it, it solves. But this may not work. Uh, maybe because the text which you're searching for is small and in the database you got capital. So what you can do is you can convert everything here. So you can say lower. So these are some inbuilt functions we have. And here also I want to lower it, the keyword. 
Okay, so we are lowering, so we, these are the inbuilt functions we in JPQL, so we can use lower. It will convert this into a small letters and even this will do it. But the problem is we are concatenating this uh, percentage percentage with the uh, keyword, right? So instead of doing this, we have to use the method. So the method name is concat. I want to concat this particular percentage with the keyword and this keyword with the percentage. And since we are opening the brackets here, that is closed here. We are opening it here. We'll close it here. Now this is only for the name. What about uh, you want to have some more things? So you have to say or and enter more things here. Now since I already have all the things written, so I will just use it here instead of typing. So I want to add more lines. I'll just paste it here. Looks like we got an extra bracket. Yeah. So this looks good. I'm just confirming if everything is correct. It's it's tricky because even if you want to check what is happening, basically we have to first add those products and check it. Uh, and I have to do things multiple times. So I will just check it once. Okay, so from where okay looks good looks good so this should work so basically what we are doing is we are converting every character every text into lower and then comparing it with the keyword so now once we have done this uh, let's restart the application or in fact we have not started even started this so let's restart and see if that search is working in fact what I want to also do is here uh, every time you call this search I'll just print searching with and let's also specify the a keyword on which it is searching. And doing that, let's restart. Okay, okay. So it's running on port number 8080, so no problem. Let me just go back to my uh, browser and let's refresh. So you can see it's no product available, so that means server is connected. And let's click on the search and search something. Let's say I want to search for Samsung phone. If I say S, okay, this is not working. Let me, let me just add a product here, Samsung Sam, Phone, Sam Mobile, Samsung, price 33, it's a phone, stock is 3, date is this, choose a file, this is a phone, open, and now when I click on submit, product added, okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, it is working, but now why it is not printing anything on the console? Let me restart once again. Okay, let's hit that. Now, again, when you restart, you will lose data. And if I say S now, what's wrong? Why is not printing anything? Let me try for the home page. This is weird. Okay, it is saying hi, but why is not doing for the search? Okay, okay, I think I got the problem. The problem is we got here products, not product. Okay, I thought there's something wrong with the ID itself. Okay, let me remove this high from the top. Oh, suddenly I started questioning my Java knowledge. Now get back here and if I say S, so you can say no product name with such name, but it is searching with S. Now if I say something else there, if I say SA, it will hit it with SA. So every time you type something, it will search. But now to actually test it, we have to add some product. So I will go back here and let's say I'm saying Sam Mobile or brand Samsung and some description, budget phone, and here price 666, it's a phone, stock is two, date is current date, or maybe 23. Let's pick up the phone image and add. So that's the first product you have, which you have added. And now we got home here. Let's add one more to test it. Also giving laptop, brand is Asus, and fast machine, it's a laptop. Date selected, image selected, submit. Okay, so you can see we got two products now. How we, we are going to search? Let's say, let's say I want to search for Sam, and you can see when I'm searching for capital A, it is doing that, right? And if I click on Sam Mobile, we are getting this. Next, if I say a phone, so it still so shows Sam Mobile because in the in the uh, description we are saying it is phone, right? Next, we can also search by uh, something else, maybe gaming with the name itself. So we got gaming laptop. Uh, we can search a brand, which is Asus. So we got gaming laptop. So that's how your search is working. Again, the UI is good, and that's why you can see such uh, beautiful text here. But then you have to also make your backend work to get it work. Uh, 
So at least you now you know how do we write our own queries with the help of JPQL. So what you do is you use select uh, from similar to SQL. The difference is instead of using a table name, you have to use a class name. And then uh, these are not compulsory thing, but then since we wanted to make sure that the search should happen even if you write, don't follow the capital and small, and that's why you got here. And that's why we are using lower and all this stuff. So yeah, that's it from searching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. So now let's, in the upcoming videos, let's see something else and uh, we'll have fun. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.